Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bach Talks. It is Monday, and this is what we do on Mondays. I share ideas in the areas of leadership, be it, communication, say it, and accountability, own it. Today, I want to talk about a leadership concept that I'm calling waking up. And I am just fascinated with this whole concept of a world that is waking up, um, becoming conscious. I've been reading a book, really studying this book since January of this year. It's now November 12th. So almost a whole year I've been reading this book and really taking it in and studying it. And the book is called Becoming a Conscious Leader by Gina Hayden. And I'm learning so much while I'm reading this that I am taking notes and really getting clearer on this. I'm not saying that I'm an expert in this whole area of conscious leadership, but I'm certainly waking up for sure. And so I am fascinated by what happens to us when we're not awake and what happens to us when we start waking up. So I know there's a term out there right now that young people are using and it's called woke. I'm being woke. And I know it's weird grammatically, but I looked it up. And when you say somebody is woke, it means that it's a sudden understanding of what's really going on when you find out you were wrong about much of what you understood to be truth. So when you become woke, it's almost like the lights go on. It's almost like you've been sleeping the whole time and all of a sudden you wake up. I guess that's how I'm interpreting this whole woke term. Um, I would call it, you know, consciousness, awareness. Um, there's another term, a Japanese, I think it's Japanese term called Satori, a sudden awakening. It's a Zen Buddhist terminology. So I was thinking about this today uh, as a leader in my organization, the couple of organizations I'm with. Um, I grew up in the 80s, but I woke up in the 2000s. I, I took a class in 2003 that really, I would say, was my um, venture into awareness. And that course was called the Landmark Forum. I took it in March of 2003. And I look at my life before Landmark and after Landmark, because for me, that was a huge awakening to things I didn't even know I didn't know. And so as a leader, it's really easy for me to tell people what to do. And if I'm holding on to control as a leader, then I'm only allowing the people I lead to be in the awareness I am currently in. So if I'm leading through control, then I am the lid. There's so many analogies we could use. Um, John Maxwell talks about the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And the first one is the law of the lid. People will only grow to the extent I, as the leader, have grown. So if I'm the lid, let's say that there's a one to 10 um, level of leadership. And let's say I've grown to the level of seven. The people around me can't go above seven because I'm the lid. Unless I'm aware of that and working to grow myself so that my lid is the lid and my lid is unlimited, which I'm not sure if that's possible or not. I think it is if you have a growth mindset. Then the people around me, I would allow to grow to whatever extent they're able to grow. So this book I'm reading, Becoming a Conscious Leader by Gina Hayden, I tell you, I have learned so much. And, and it, it remains theory until I put it into practice. So I'm still working on a lot of it. But um, Buckminster Fuller is a guy I want to do more research about. She talks about him in the book. And he said, to inspire change, we need to create an alternative paradigm that is more appealing than the current one. Because if we don't create this alternative paradigm, why would people want to change? If they're comfortable and familiar with what is, there's no need for them to jump into an alternative um, opportunity. But he says, when that happens, those who are ready will leap and those who aren't won't. There will be no one to transform and no transformation to be done to anyone because it's not about anyone else. If we as leaders 
realize that this is a place that we want to go to, then there's no reason to make anybody do anything. And so if you think about being a conscious leader, someone who's waking up, becoming woke, where you now see things differently. If you use the matrix analogy, it's I took the red pill and now I see things differently. How, how are we waking up? What, are, what do we need to experience in our lives as leaders in order to wake up? Is it a clanging alarm? Is it something that we're going to resist, but that we can't avoid? Or is it a slow, um, nice music, slow and easy? Maybe there's a, a, the dawn comes and the light slowly dawns on us. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like we need a clanging alarm right now and we will resist it and we will be angry at what wakes us up. Because it's, it's when you're in a deep sleep, if somebody comes and shakes you and there's a clanging alarm, you wake up angry. I get it. Yet, what's the alternative? Is it to stay asleep? So becoming a conscious leader is a process. And I, I'm not quite sure if it's a process we have to choose or whether it chooses us. We're, we seem to be really okay with being mediocre in some cases. You know, I, I, I have said to people, hey, do you want to take this class or do you want to join this group? And they'll go, nope, 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 I'm good. I'm good. And I, I get kind of like, I get frustrated about that. because, And that's all about me. My frustration is all about me. But I get frustrated because I wonder when good became okay. I'm, I'm good. You know, Jim Collins tells us that good is the enemy of great. And, and I guess excellence is one of my values personally. So I don't think I'm ever done. And when people around me are saying, no, 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 I'm good. I, I'm good. I don't need any more of that. You know, what, what a former boss said to me was touchy feely crap that made him puke. I don't need any of that touchy feely crap. And, and what I'm realizing in leadership is it's all touchy feely. It's all, we're making it up as we go, because if we're not waking up to this, then we're commanded controlling out of fear. And the alternative to fear is love. And that means that I have to be willing to allow people to grow at whatever level they are willing and able to grow. And so it's really interesting. This book is talking about mastering our ego you know ego and being conscious inhabit two rather different planes and one has to be left in order to gain entry to the other and it's scary to let go of that ego it's scary to venture out into the nothingness that's out in front of us yet what's the alternative to stay stuck to stay asleep and so i i'm just fascinated and curious by this whole concept of waking up um, there's so many things I could talk about in this book. This morning when I was reading, I, I read about Joseph Jaworski, who wrote a book called Synchronicity, which I have also read in the past. And he says in this book, true leadership is about creating a domain in which we continually learn and become more capable of participating in our unfolding future. And that means we don't know what it might look like. We, we're, we're building the bridge as we walk on it which is another book I've been studying. So there, there's just a lot of opportunity in waking up to conscious leadership, doing it on purpose, being with purpose. I'm not saying it's easy. It's certainly not easy. It would be so much easier to stay asleep and then just pull the covers over our heads because that's what our lower nature wants us to do. But when we have that instant awakening, that satori, that, that awareness, that consciousness, when we get woke, <laughs> to use that term, man, we can't go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. Ask questions. Find the people around you who are okay, or if not okay, at least willing to accept this discomfort that we might find ourselves in as we question together what's the path. The, the joy is in the journey, if we can support each other in that unknowingness, but really knowingness that it's all about the, the bigger picture. It's all about growing together. And that's what I love about 
this whole concept of waking up in our leadership. So while I don't have a whole lot of answers in this area, I still have a lot of questions and I'd love to explore some of those questions with you, anybody who's there who wants to have these conversations. Just think about organizations that start waking up and what could happen when we have someone holding the flashlight going ahead, not with the answers, but just asking a question over here with a flashlight that shines in this direction. And maybe asks a question like, have you looked over here? Have you thought about it like this? What if with that new expanded awareness together now, we, we are on a different plane? Together we're on a different peak on the mountain and, and we all together work on figuring out what the next step is. That way, there's nobody saying this is right, this is wrong. You're in fear if you get it wrong. It's, it's that, it's technicolor, it's, it's messy. And, and that's where these conscious leaders can emerge. And the conscious leaders actually might be more conscious than I am as the titled leader. And what happens then? That's expansive. That's when new ideas emerge and when new products and services and and expansive opportunities show up so don't be afraid to wake up let's talk more about this if you're interested leave a comment here or let's let's find a time or place to continue this conversation because the world needs people who are waking up i'm so glad you are one of them Talk to you soon. Bye.